Now that we've come in from the field, we've got our bag of artifacts. Remember that we have our bag labeled with the location we were excavating, the depth we were excavating, and the date. Um, we're going to assign the provenience number in the lab so that the um, GPS location will always match this smaller number. With this bag now here uh, in our lab, we're going to uh, wash all of the artifacts and then dry them on trays, which is what I have here. So all the artifacts are washed and dried on the trays to get ready to be sorted. As we go through the sorting of the artifacts, our trays are gonna look a little bit more like this. So we have our different types sorted out. So you can see I've got some glass separated out, a button, I've got different types of pottery sorted out, and my metal pieces, my bone. Looks like we've got some charcoal, oh, some eggshells, some fish scales. So this is kind of the middle of the process um, in our lab where we've kind of gotten everything roughly sorted. And then we're gonna start identifying the types of pottery, uh, the types of metal that we have, whether we have nails or we have furniture tacks and those sorts of things. And then those are going to get put into labeled bags. And each bag, remember our field bag had location information and each individual artifact bag has that location information. And then on the back side, it's got its artifact tag um, telling you exactly what artifact it is so that we can catalog it in our computer system. So that's gonna take you through some of the stages that we have. Once this has been completed, it'll be the task to uh, try and figure out um, how many of these pieces of pottery go together so we can start making whole objects out of the pieces that we have excavated uh, here at Colonial Dorchester. A good question for class discussion is why it's important for archeologists to know exactly where an artifact was found. Remember we have our bag labeled uh, with the location and it's a GPS coordinates and even its depth, how deep in the ground uh, that particular artifact was found. And all of these numbers get linked to this provenience number. So if you wanna take a moment to discuss that with the class, come up with ideas on why you think it's important that an archeologist know exactly where an artifact was found. At Colonial Dorchester, we're real lucky to have this primary resource document, this map drawn in 1742. It just shows the town laid out so very well, but primary resource documents can only give you so much information. Uh, this map in particular is missing some really key features that if you came to the park, you would notice right away. It's missing our bell tower of where the church should be. And even more important, it's missing the fort down here in the corner. So here we've got some, some folks with their houses or businesses down here, but a few uh, deck, uh, uh, Years later, it's going to become the fort in 1757. We have other historic documents that we'll use as well. Um, newspaper ads and letters, uh, items that were for sale as property changed hands. So it's all those documents combined with the archaeology that helps us get a better idea of what was going on here in the town. Now the artifacts that you see behind me all come from this location. It's lot number 52 in the town owned by Joseph Blake. Now, knowing that it's here on this map doesn't really help you with the modern day. What does it look like today? So I've got this map. I can show you. So this is a, a more modern layout, but you can see these black squares. So this is that town map we were just looking at low, overlaid with the modern landscape. And then over here, you can see the uh, location coordinates going around so that when our bag is labeled with its GPS coordinates, they line up with these here, so you can triangulate that those artifacts are gonna come from right here on lot number 52. Now, why is it important for archeologists to know where an artifact came from? Well, it's certainly gonna add to the story. Knowing that an artifact is found on Joseph Blake's property is gonna tell a different story than having an artifact that I know was found in the shipbuilding area of the town. And when you visit a site like Colonial Dorchester or any other historic site, and maybe you find an artifact on the ground, maybe there's a real heavy rain, it's important that you leave an artifact where it is because that's gonna help the artifact tell the story um, about what was going on. When you move it, 
it's going to lose its story. And while it might seem interesting, it's not going to help archaeologists better understand what was going on in the past. And that's our goal. Even how deep it is we find an artifact underground is important for archaeologists because it can oftentimes be the way that archaeologists will use to uh, date a site on how uh, deep in the ground it's found. When artifacts come in from the field, they're going to be all dirty, just being fresh out of the ground. So when they come back to the lab, we need to carefully wash each artifact. So I've got this piece of uh, pottery here. I've already filled up my uh, container with some water and I'm going to use this trusty tool here. Do you guys recognize it? It's a toothbrush. So I'm going to get my toothbrush wet and I'm just going to gently scrub off the dirt uh, from around the edges uh, of the piece of pottery, um, as well as the, uh, the front of the back of it, making sure I remove all of the dirt. I'm going to be very careful of my scrubbing, not using too much pressure, just like you use with your teeth. But I want to make sure that I don't disturb any decorations that might be on there. Artifacts are usually very fragile when they come out of the ground and I don't want to cause any more damage as I clean it up so that it can be identified later. Once this artifact is all clean, I'm going to take it over to the trays and let it dry out for a couple of days before we begin the sorting process. After an excavation, an archaeologist will bring back the artifacts, but they don't always know exactly what an artifact is. They might be familiar if it's a time period uh, that they've been excavating before, but sometimes you get an artifact that you just don't quite know what it is. And if you were here, I'd have you take a look at probably these artifacts and try and identify, you know, what they were. And we would go through our little artifact analysis, but it doesn't quite work virtually. So I thought of a different artifact we can do. And so I have a more modern artifact. I have this penny. And this will work out just fine. And for the other artifacts on your artifact analysis sheet, you can just use any objects that you have in the classroom, just typical things. The important thing is that you just kind of think about the artifacts uh, critically and you don't just write down, you know, describe the artifact. It's a penny because that's not really a description. You're just stating what it is. So I'll take you through the first one with this penny that I have here. And so if I was going to describe this, I would say that it was round and flat. Uh, it's shiny. It seems like it's made out of metal. And I would guess that based on the uh, color and shine of the metal that it was copper. It seems like it has some words on it. So I might describe in God we trust. It's got the word Liberty in 2016. It's got the profile of, of a man. On the back side, we've got different words, United States of America, one cent, and then a little a shield on the back of this particular penny. So those are all going to be words I'd use to describe it. It's very light. It's not very heavy. I can feel the, the words and the uh, relief of the uh, bust of the person. So it's got some texture to it. And I'm going to write all of that down on my sheet for describing the artifact. All right. The next item on our artifact analysis is what material is it made out of? And we kind of already discussed that a little bit based on the shine and the color that, you know, I do think that this is going to be made out of copper. So, you know, you might not know what the metal is, what the material is. Um, for this one, I'm going to write down that it's made out of metal and then I'm going to write copper. And then our last question is, what is it a part of? This one can be tricky if you don't know what the artifact is. Sometimes you got to have a little bit of a guess. But I would guess that given this is round and flat, and it's been very similar throughout the centuries, that this is going to be a coin. And so instead of writing down that it's a penny, because I know that it's a penny, I'm just going to write down that it's a coin on my artifact analysis. And knowing that it's a coin for an archaeologist might help them, you know, have a deeper discussion of what the economy was like and trade, uh, how people were buying and selling goods. So uh, an older coin could give an archaeologist a lot of information. And for people today, pennies can tell us a lot about people as well. Our last item on our artifact analysis is to sketch the artifact. So I'm just going to do a real sketch uh, of this uh, penny. So then I'll remember what this artifact looks like whenever I'm analyzing finds from the excavation.
So that's how we're going to do that artifact analysis. So if you want to find three or four other items that you have in your classroom, just typical everyday things will work. And then you want to put yourself in the mind of an archaeologist and start describing the artifact, figuring out what material it's made out of, and then trying to uh, guess what it's a part of. Now, since we weren't able to analyze these together, we'll, uh, in our next segment, I'll let you know what it is these are in fact a part of. Now that you've finished your artifact analysis, I thought you might like to know what these objects were actually a part of, since they're just smaller pieces. So our first artifact over here is actually a, a bone. It's gonna be a cow bone. So we've got a cow bone for uh, food. Uh, this little guy here with the hole in it, it's actually part of a smoking pipe for smoking tobacco. This one here, I don't have a larger portion of, but it's part of a plate. And you guys will be familiar with plates. The artifact that uh, we first started off with is the handle of a utensil. It's the handle of a spoon. This guy here is gonna be a nail. And this one's been cleaned up just a little bit more so you can start to see that nail shape a bit better. And this one here is a little bit tricky, but it's actually the bottom of a bottle. So this is gonna be the bottom right here. And here's an example of a more complete bottle. You can see how the bottom of it um, turns in, just like our example here. Now archeologists go to school um, to get an education on how to properly excavate and identify artifacts. And they learn from experience, but sometimes you have things that you haven't seen before. Maybe you're in a different area of the country or it's just a new artifact for you. And so archeologists will actually bring in some other resources through books, um, even looking on the internet to find uh, images of the artifacts they found, descriptions. This one here is one that I made, which just uh, has to do with things we specifically find here at Colonial Dorchester. But we've got all of these wonderful guides uh, to help us figure out what the pieces are to the whole so that we can better understand the greater story of life here at Colonial Dorchester. Here we have a bunch of different ceramics that we find here uh, during our excavations. And the ceramics come from all over the world. That has to do with the economy in early South Carolina. Um, they're gonna be focused on that mercantile economy. So many of their objects, uh, products are gonna come from England. That's what England wants. And the colonists are gonna be sending their raw goods to England to make these products. So over here, all these different types of pottery are all gonna be made in England uh, from this uh, rough uh, coarse earthenware to uh, some of the fancier cream and uh, salt glaze um, stoneware that we have. Uh, you remember the pipe stems from a different activity. So we've got our, our pipe stems. These artifacts over here are going to come uh, from elsewhere in the world and they're going to signify that global trade. Today we think that the world is so small it's so easy to connect with people from all over the world very quickly but they also had global trade back in the 1700s as well. So this piece of pottery is going to come from Germany. We've got this piece of pottery coming from Holland. This one's going to come all the way from China and then this one here it's actually made right here in South Carolina. Now, when you think about these different pieces of pottery and you think about that global trade, and then you think about the townspeople here um, at Dorchester, do you think that getting a tea set from China would cost you more or less money than getting a tea set from England? It's probably gonna cost you, it's gonna cost you more to get it all the way from China. And so as archaeologists, we're looking at these different types of artifacts and what they're using. And so if we're excavating in a, in a particular location and maybe we're finding lots of porcelain, uh, we're finding lots of uh, stemmed glassware and other fine objects, we might start to think that the owner of that property had a bit of wealth to them. And they're showing off that wealth through the objects that they're buying, just like we do today. We have objects that we like and objects that we, um, stuff we want to buy that maybe you know we have to save up our allowance for. And just like that, we're gonna show off um, you know, how, how well of a saver we are basically uh, with our allowance. And the colonists are gonna show off their wealth too uh, here at, at, in the town of Dorchester and in Charleston as well.
At Colonial Dorchester, we work on our excavations to learn about life, what life was like in the 1700s. Those artifacts, once they're processed in our lab, we'll find ways to bring them out to show visitors, like this wayside, showing you one of the pencils that were found uh, when they excavated the school site here at the park. Without having a museum, anytime I have programs, I always bring out artifacts in portable displays so that people can see the objects that we're finding here to learn the more complete story of what life was like here in Colonial Dorchester. But artifacts found in other parks you might find in museums or historic homes, it's a way to connect with the people of the past by seeing the uh, objects that they found to be important in their lives. It connects us um, in a very tangible way to the past. Thank you guys for joining me on this virtual Discover Carolina program. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about what archaeologists do and how they help us better understand what colonial life was like here in South Carolina. I invite you to come out to Colonial Dorchester and see the historic site for yourself. Get a good look at our uh, archaeological excavation that we have going on. You know the archaeology doesn't always happen in the field, but whenever we are out here uh, working and, and digging, we always post it on our park website as the Process of Discovery program. So you can look up the times that that's available and come out and see it, uh, this for yourself. The park is open seven days a week and we're open every day from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. in the winter and 6 p.m. in the summer. Hope to see you soon.